see, I can't read the name here. It is for Deborah. Hi, Deborah. Deborah says, I would like to do weekly covered calls, wanting to get assigned. Also knowing that I may be in a position for six to eight weeks if the stock doesn't rise. Okay, what is the best time frame for a protective put, and should the put be OTM? Okay, so two questions in one, possibly three, even though you asked one question. What I mean by that is, oh, let me go back here. Let me take the last question first. What is the best time for a protective put, and should the put be OTM? Well, the best structure for a married put for me, and from what I've proven over different webinars over various years, Deborah, is the married put radioactive trading approach. Buying the put five, six, eight months out of time and slightly in the money for the best single digit protection. Why? Why not buy just buy a cheap out of the money put? And it's because you get what you pay for. A cheap out of the money put still might be double digit risks, which we don't want to take. Okay? And if you buy slightly in the money, there's no guarantee you'll see a profit because you have less time for the stock to move. When I buy a one month out, two week out put, what is the two things that I know? Number one, let me just let me just pull up a regular married put here. We, we showed this a little bit last time. And I know I'm gonna answer your question, Deborah, but I'm doing this for a specific way because you asked my approved approach first. What is the preferred approach? I'm gonna take Qualk now. Is mine up here? Is my new one still here? Let me go to page two. I bet you it's not there because it had such a good movement. There it is. HDS supply. Okay. So here's a stock position. Mm, 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 mm. 36.90. I was working on that video for Larry and uh, a VOW at the end of the day. I'm in this position. I bought the stock four days ago at 32.69. And I'm holding the 37 and a half put. Earnings are coming up in a couple days. I'm probably going to buy an extra put and pay for it with a bear call credit spread to have a no risk W profit and loss chart going into earnings. It's kind of interesting. In any case, that's not why we're here. We're here to talk about Deborah. So this gives me a good controlled risk on the position. Okay. Now, I want to show you something real quick. I'm going to go to something called the search by symbol tool from the search. It's just going to show me HD positions. Here's my preferred target. The 42 and a half might be okay as well, but it's a little bit too deep in the money for me. Okay, it's 17% of the money, that's close. But 6.6% .6 still within my threshold. This is January, Deborah. Now, if I go to a lower, cheaper strike put, the 27 and a half, I'm taking on a 27% risk. That's not what I want. Ooh. Let's go one month out. That July, that was 45 days out, Deborah. Okay. Now, in this case, would a 45 strike be good with only a 3.8% risk? Well, that looks great, but what's the problem? I only have 42 days for the stock to go up to 45. This isn't the structure I want. Okay, for a shorter term, you are going to want to be out of the money, but what are we talking about? Look, the 32 and a half is a 13% risk. Okay, it's double digits. It's where I want to avoid. The 35 at the money is 8.4%. I'm adding 319 to the position. That means I need the stock to be trading at 38.19 in 42 days. It's not the right structure. Okay. Now, what is the worst thing? Let me go back to our custom spread. Tool. What is the worst thing I can do with a properly structured married put? The worst thing I can do, Deborah, is to sell, is to force myself to sell a weekly call against this position. Why? Because I don't want to set, this one doesn't offer weeklies, but let's just take the 14 day even. This doesn't offer weeklies, but look, I bought the 40 strike put, and that put my cost basis at 42.89 with a low risk of only 6.7%. The 40 call only gives me 40 or 50 cents. So let me go at the money. Let me sell the 37 and a half. This doesn't work. Why? Because although I'm getting about a dollar, dollar 15 in premium, Okay, I'm sorry, a dollar eight in premium. My cost basis is still forty-one eighty-one. What just happened? How did my risk ever go up to ten point three percent? Because I didn't pay attention to the structure. The risk, the chance for loss, the ten point three percent is here. I did lower the loss down here to maybe five percent or four point five percent to the downside, but in the upside, in the direction you thought it was going to go to be assigned, it's now ten point three percent. Okay. You're talking about a standard collar is what you're talking about. So 
why did I answer it this way? Because you said, what is the best time frame for protective put and should the put be OTM? If so, how much OTM? The best time frame and best structure for the married put is following the radioactive trading techniques, which I know is not what you're doing. But that is the answer to the best structure. What you're talking about is buying HD here. We don't have weeklies, but we'll just take the 14 day out. We're going to sell the 35 to get assigned and get about 220. Now what I think your target should be is probably one or two strikes away. Not so much out of the money, but if you're looking for protection in case you're completely wrong, usually two strikes away is the best move. Okay? Um, maybe more is be cheaper, it'd be 17 cents, but here's why. Because even if you're doing this and hoping to get assigned, you're getting time value, but most of your premium is intrinsic, which you're giving up already. So you don't want to pay too much for this put, but you still have to have it make sense. Okay? So in general, I would see it's even a 12% risk. What happens if I want a lower risk, Deborah, and I go up to the higher strike, to the 35? That might only give me an 8% risk, but then this might only be a 0.5% return. I would not recommend with what you're doing, hoping to be assigned, to do with the dynamic collar where you're buying the put further out of time. It should be equal to where you're selling your calls, even if you're planning on holding it for six to eight weeks. The reason why is because you're going to be adding too much to the cost basis. So let's go six to eight weeks. That's roughly 42 days, right? Yeah, I'm sorry. It's, it's, it's six weeks out. So here, if you did this structure and you did it with a 30 put, that first expiration, you're still at a 12.7% risk, okay? You're getting 101, I'm sorry, you're getting 230 in, but you're giving up a dollar ten of that, dollar twenty of that to intrinsic, okay? So half of that is the intrinsic value you're giving up, and now you're trying to hedge the rest of the half of that premium by buying a cheap out-of-the-money put, which is still taking you to a double-digit risk. I don't think this is the right structure for what you're trying to do. Try to force buying a put two to three months out in time and then selling week by week by week against it. If your goal is to sell week by week by week to get assigned, I would stick with a standard collar for the lower price. I wouldn't try to just do it this way. And if you don't get assigned, then just re-bracket the standard collar. Um, again, Deborah, but the preferred approach for me is the radioactive trade, which we talked about earlier with Stream. It's 50 to 60% of my total portfolio value. Um, Standard collars, I think, are a good approach, but trying to mess around with, even though the benefit of buying further out in time is that you're paying less per day. If I go three times the amount out in time to buy an option, I'm not paying three times the cost. That's one of the benefits of the radioactive trading, going 150, 200 days out in time, as opposed to month by month by month. It's a lower annualized cost. And you buying a two to three month output would be doing the same thing. You'd have a lower annualized cost. But then you're, you're, it's getting, the position as a whole is getting confused because your goal is to sell in the money weekly. Most people do the standard collars or the dynamic collars. The call is at or out of the money hoping for some appreciation and to continue to write and avoid assignment. Your goal is to actually be assigned and you're using that as your main protection. If you want extra protection, stick with the same expiration. Just do standard collars in that case for the lower cost. You can still hopefully meet your target gains, which will be harder to do if you're trying to force that further out in time by selling an in-the-money covered call to begin with, Deborah. Okay? So if you want protection for your in-the-money weekly covered calls, do you want to be assigned? In this case, I would suggest maybe one or two strikes, probably be two strikes below or the put option with the same expiration. You're doing a standard collar, not really trying to do a calendar covered call or anything along those lines because your goal is still to be assigned on the position. And if there's really is a run-up, you might be giving up return you thought you had because of the relationship to the further out in time put to the near-term caller and the delta of the stock as well. If you have a stock that you feel is going to be a strong mover for six to eight weeks, I'd still be tempted to buy 150, 200 day output on the position as a married put approach. All right, so I want to go back here. Frank had said, um, why not really low risk deep in the money puts? Because then your expectancy of profit is too small. Where were we? HDS? Oh, sorry. I, I didn't mean to do that. I paused the screen for a second, but I think we're good now. I meant to erase the drawing. <laughs> there we go. Frank, let's go back here. This is, yes, this is what I wanted. Um, I'm looking at more results. I'm going to go to all results for January. Okay. 
All right. The stock's at 3651. Okay? And this is a this is a twofold question. My target discussed in the blueprint, what we look for is going to be and I'm sorry, probably just these two. Maybe this one, but unlikely. Here's the reason why. We don't want to go more than 20% in the money. That's why I have that field there. I don't want to go more than 20% in the money. And my target risk is probably going to be about 4 to 8%. Okay? And where am I talking about? A stock at 36.19 at the 40, the 42 and a half strike. The 37 and a half has a 10.5% risk. That's too high for me. I don't want it. It has way too high for me. I want to be in that 4 to 8% range. That's what's proven to work after, you know, decades of research. Now it's Kurt started doing this in 2002, 2003. And Ernie started, and I started doing it in 2008. Here we are in 2020. We've done ones where the deep out of the money put far out in time, deeper in the money far out in time. Here's the problem. The lowest risk I can get is 1.9% at the 50 strike, which is 38% in the money. Actually, the 55 strikes deeper than mine. It looks like a wild bid ask spread, which is also important because when you go deeper in the money, you get wider bid ask spread. There's no guarantee you're going to get midpoint. This one's probably spot on. This risk, if you got 1870 or maybe a better midpoint, which should be much lower than 1.9. The, the higher strike should always have lower. This is an outlier. Okay, but here's the thing. Remember what we just showed with Debra, that if I'm doing an in-the-money put position, whether it's two weeks out, whether it's three weeks out, I give myself less time for the stock to move in my desired direction. And the one thing I don't want to do is sell a call below the put strike price because then I risk getting a much higher risk, possibly well into the double digits because my cost basis is so high. What's the only short-term call we saw for the 14th that made sense? It was a 37 and a half strike. The 40 was only 30 cents, right? So you only have 69 cents to make up. Okay, let's say you sell the 40, but what's the problem? Your cost basis is 50. You are bullish on this stock. You try to reduce the risk by selling a call here at 40, Frank. You're taking a 10-point risk or roughly 25% to the upside in the direction you thought the stock was going to go. Now, as a whole, Frank, why not just do this structure with this deep in the money 50 strike put, which is only risking 1.4%, and I've got 160, 100, and, I'm sorry, we're at 200 and some odd days. This was in January, wasn't it? So we were further out in time. Why not just do this with the lower risk? Because the expectancy of profit is so small. I need so much room. I need the stock to move up 12 points or 33% before I likely start can even trying the income methods. And to reach break even at the halfway point, I need it to move up about uh, 12, uh, 15 to 20% to 42 from 36. The expectancy of profit is too low. So what would happen if I opened 100 trades, 38 to 50% in the money with only a 1.4 or 0.5% risk? 90, 70, no, 85 to 90% of them, I'd probably lose the 0.5 to 1.4%. The other 10% might have seen very drastic gains, 33, 34, 50% increase over that six-month period, and where am I? 2%, 3%, 4% profit, because I had to pay so much for that. That target that's discussed in the blueprint, the proper structure, is extremely important because, yes, going deeper in the money gives you a lower risk, but your expectancy of profit is moved down to you know less than 5%, about 1% if you go too deep in the money. The first few chapters of the blueprint talk about the proper structure. I always shared some of it with you, right? That um, the uh, – <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Whew. Um, that's, that's the, sorry, the proper structure that you don't want to go too deep in the money. You don't go want to go more than 20% in the money. And you, you want to stay in that field between 3 to 9%. I prefer 4 to 8%. Honestly, I stay between about 4 and 7.5%. I don't like taking a risk of more than 7.5%. I allow that to happen on my last two or three married puts going higher than 7% because I was bottom feeding at the – bottom of March, beginning of April, and the volatility was still so high that a normal position, Kraft Heinz, buying the stock at, oh, what did I buy it at, 22 or 23, and buying the, I'm sorry, sorry, buying the 26 put and buying, 
occupying the stock at 26, sorry, and buying the 30 strike put was an 8.4% risk. Any normal year, 2016, 17, even 18, that structure of buying Kraft Heinz at 26 and buying the 30 strike put would have been a 4% risk, and that's all the way out to January. That's an eight-month position. Okay, so it's double that because the volatility was so high after the decline. 